Joining me now is top advisor to Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and former Israeli ambassador to the UK, Mark Regev. It's good to have you back on the program, Ambassador. Uh, tell us what you know. Where are the hostages now? And anything you can tell us about their conditions? How are they doing? Well, the first thing, it's good they're back. Uh, uh, what is it, 13 people who were in Hamas's captivity in, in dark tunnels, uh, I don't yet cannot tell you what they went through in those last 50 days, but I can only presume it was not pleasant and that these people are free. And that's a good thing. But it's bittersweet because, as you've been saying in the, on the panel, these 13 people are out, but there's still over 100 kept in Gaza. Uh, it's true, according to the, uh, the formula that was negotiated and and here we have to praise president biden who played a key role in 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 making this happen but according to the formula in the next four days another 37 hostages have to be released um uh, taking the number to 50 that was agreed and it's also agreed that the humanitarian pause can continue if hamas continues to release extra hostages and we've we've got a formula for that too once again negotiated uh, with the help of president biden that says we will give an additional day of 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 humanitarian pause for 10 hostages and another day for another 10 hostages and so basically now the the ball is in hamas's court this this humanitarian pause can stop four days from now and we'll be back to square one and we'll be back at full-scale war or we can extend the humanitarian pause by the release of more hostages. I hope they release more hostages. Is there anything you're seeing so far, your government is seeing, Ambassador, that would suggest that Hamas, at least at this early stage, is not keeping its end of the deal? Does everything seem to be going as well as could have been expected? Well, I, I suppose if expect, expectations are low, and they are low, when something succeeds, everyone is, is pleased. And, and of course, we know who we're dealing with, with with Hamas. Just just looking at the names of the people released tonight in their ages. I mean, Hamas released a two-year-old girl, a four-year-old girl, a five-year-old girl, and a nine-year-old boy, together with six women over the age of 70. I mean, they claimed that their operation on October 7th was against Israeli military targets, yes? The two-year-old, the four-year-old, the five-year-old. This just shows what we're up against, a brutal, fanatical, terrorist organization. So when actually we did get a release today, of course, everyone's happy. But we have to keep uh, making sure that Hamas stands by its commitments. We have to see 37 people, additional people released in the coming days. And once again, if Hamas wants this humanitarian pause to be extended, they know exactly what they need to do. They have to they have to free more of the hostages. So in addition to the children you just mentioned, there are five women who are in their 70s and an 85-year-old woman. Six. Six. Oh, sorry, you're correct. Yes, yes. Five. Five. And then a sixth yes. who is 85 years old who is um, not in good health and who has a number of, uh, we know, medical needs. But so, so it's going to be different for, from person to person. But what can you tell us about what the coming days look like for the, for the hostages who have been released? So obviously, uh, we have they, they have to be cared for. And no one could have gone through 50 days uh, being taken hostage by a terrorist group like Hamas, uh, and it, it can't affect them. So obviously, their physical health is a major concern, but also their psychological uh, health. Uh, what trauma did they go through, especially the children? And, and so I think here we'll have Israel's best experts working with the families to try to help them uh, come through this in a way that they can return to normal lives, that these children can return to being normal children. I'm not a psychologist. I don't know how, how what they went through, and I don't know what needs to be done. But I can tell you, Israel and all its social services will be working with these families to make sure they get the best help that is available. I was looking at the statement from your prime minister, and one of the things that Benjamin Netanyahu said was um, this is one of the goals of the war and that the goal continues to be to obtain the release of all of the hostages. But he added, and we are committed to achieving all the goals of the war. He has been very clear. You have been very clear about what that is, which at the top of it is to destroy Hamas, to see that that terrorist threat is gone. 
But given that there is a pause now, that pause may go on for four days, perhaps longer, depending on how the situation unfolds. How do you restart a war? I don't think we have a choice, to be frank, uh, because to leave Hamas in power in Gaza is just an invitation for another October 7th massacre. It's not that Mark Regev says so. They say so. Hamas leaders, when interviewed, say they would do October 7th again and again and again. Given the capability, given the opportunity, they would once again massacre Israeli civilians, they'd once again butcher our people, they'd once again burn houses down with the people in them, they'd do the massive rapes all over again, they'd machine gun the young people at the music festival, all that they say they will do again given the opportunity. So when Israel says no more, we mean it and we refuse. The people of Israel refuse to live next to this terror enclave on our southern border. It's just not sustainable. We don't have to live in permanent fear of terrorists crossing the frontier and butchering our children in the middle of the night. No one should have to live like that. But let's, uh, let's be frank. Getting rid of Hamas is also good for the people of Gaza. Uh, uh, Hamas has ruled them for 16 years. And what have they bought, the people of Gaza? Just pain and suffering and, and poverty. Surely the people of Gaza deserve better too. Um, if I can just uh, put this little point forward, we've just been informed by the White House that we will hear from President Biden, who is in Nantucket right now at 145. So a little more, a little less than half an hour from now, if he is on time. Uh, but let me go back, if I can, to you talked about the other 100 hostages. Of course, there are more than 180 hostages still being held by their families. A hundred, it is believed to be held by Hamas. Let me ask you about the other 80. How much clarity is is there how much intelligence do you have about where they are, who is holding them, and what is going on behind the scenes to see that they are released as well? So the numbers are, uh, are a little different. There were 236 hostages that we knew about before today's release. So you take off the 13 uh, Israelis who were freed, and then you also had, I, I believe it was a group of nine foreign nationals mainly uh, Thai and Filipinos who come here to work in Israel, uh, in agriculture and other areas. So the number's gone down. Uh, but once again, Hamas has committed to release a number 37. So that means there's over 100 left of all the hostage community. Uh, that's probably the wrong word, but the people who have been abducted and held against their will by Hamas. And we want to see as many of them released. Our goal in this uh, campaign is to see all the hostages released. Now, people say, uh, but you're at the same time uh, doing a military uh, uh, war against Hamas. Uh, and they say there's a contradiction. There's no contradiction. Hamas wouldn't have released anyone today. Not one of the 13 Israelis would have been released today without military pressure. Because Hamas knows, and we've said it repeatedly, we will only agree to this sort of humanitarian pause for the release of our hostage. And we were hitting Hamas hard. We were destroying its military infrastructure. We were eliminating its top command. Hamas was receiving very powerful blows from the Israeli Defense Forces. And they needed this time out. They needed this pause. And so our military action expedited, in my opinion, the release of hostages. And if they release more hostages, it's only because they fear the resumption of Israel's military operation. And so we see the two goals of our operation, the military campaign to destroy Hamas's military machine and, the, and, and, and getting our hostages out, they, they complement each other. You don't have to be a military strategist to understand the advantage uh, for Hamas of continuing to hold the American hostages. No Americans were released today. What is your level of confidence, Ambassador, that tomorrow or in the coming days, Americans will be released? Well, they promised, uh, as part of the understandings, to release the, uh, the children. And there's one specific, Abigail, who you know is a joint Israeli-American citizen. And so we would hopefully see her in the next coming days, but we're waiting to see what the next list that Hamas will bring us, yes? Uh, uh, they have committed to release 50. We believe all the children should be part of that 50, and I hope she'll, she'll be one of the people on the coming list. But once again, we're dealing with a brutal, fanatical terrorist organization, not humanitarians. And it's difficult sometimes to understand their calculations. But we will insist, yes, that they keep what they agreed to, which is there has to be 37 more people released in the next three days, and that all the children must be released.